up guys welcome once again to the channel it's always great to have you back and if you're new don't forget to subscribe remember that in this channel we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals so don't forget to click on the notification bell so you get all the latest news on chemical and process engineering so i was wondering whether or not chemical engineering was getting more popular or even less popular because apparently I have seen less chemical engineers uh, graduating each year, either in Mexico or in US. And I also have seen a less activity on the subreddit for chemical engineering and also less blogs. I haven't seen that much activity. So I was wondering whether or not it is true that chemical engineering is decreasing in popularity. And apparently after my quick Google search, as you can see here guys, there is a 5% decrease overall in the latest years on chemical engineering graduates. Meaning that yes, in fact, chemical engineering is decreasing in popularity. So as my chemical engineering background, I was curious on why is this phenomenon happening right now? So I started digging deep in the internet and started reading on why chemical engineering is dying, why it's no longer popular or so, and got some surprises that I didn't expect. Some of them I really always knew, of course, and some of them were totally new for me, or at least I didn't consider having a great weight on the decisions on why less people is selecting chemical engineering as their bachelor or university degree. The idea number one is, of course, the job market. The famous job market for chemical engineers has been, let's say, shifting or changing waters. It's not as before, where oil and gas was a very huge amount of what chemical engineers could do. As you can imagine, the average job for a chemical engineer has been changing. Especially because right now, the job market is not so great. It's not so easy to find a job. It's not easy to find a great job. It's even harder. Typically, you will need to change locations or they're very remote in the middle of nowhere, which of course we don't like to, or at least most people want to go. Heavy hours, maybe more than the typical nine to five, maybe eight, Eight, nine, ten hours must be work in such jobs. And of course, this demotivate a lot of people, especially the young graduates. They will be ranting all around the internet saying that it is not as great as it used to be. It's very hard to find a job. You need to send like a 300, 400, 500 CVs, resumes all around the internet to get maybe three, four interviews. And those interviews will be hard as hell with a lot of competition. So definitely the job market does not help. The second idea is kind of related to the job market, but not direct. And we're talking about job mobility or how easy is it for you to move along the ranks. Of course, you start as a young junior engineer. You're happy, you're an analyst, you're a process engineer, maybe you're in the technical part, maybe you're in the sales part, maybe you're in the operation part, but whatever area you're working, you are motivated because you just landed your job and you're happy that maybe in one, two, or maybe worst case scenario, three years, you will be granted a promotion. Well, this apparently doesn't seem to fit reality. So typically in very mature companies or let's say old school companies such oil and gas maybe or very chemical process production, maybe in large complex or large petrochemical complexes and all that, it's kind of hard to get a promotion or a raise rather quickly. You will typically be able to change on maybe on the horizontal level, meaning that maybe you're in the production area as a process engineer. Maybe you go to maintenance parts still as a junior engineer. But of course, you don't see that reflected on your paycheck. And to be honest, guys, in the world that we're living with the quick pace, we love to see changes fast. And why not? We are seeing friends that go to maybe PepsiCo, Procter & Gamble, or these huge companies that they get raises maybe once a year, they get promotions maybe after two years, they are changing projects every six months, maybe 10 months, 12 months. And in the other side, you are there stagnated waiting for the next project, maybe in one year, maybe a promotion in three years, maybe a raise on your salary in one, two years. Definitely this does not help to the popularity of chemical engineering. This next idea is kind of funny and curious, but yet very important. And I really think is something that each day is getting more important. And we're talking about actually belonging or feeling the belonging to the company. So back in the day, it was okay if you were working for X company or Y company because no one actually cared and you were happy working there and that will be great. But now, young engineers want to feel that belonging. And what I mean with this is, for instance, computer scientists are going to Apple, they're going to Microsoft, they're going to maybe Facebook, they're going to work at Google, which are products that we typically use daily. And people think, 
or regard that as great. Whereas as chemical engineers are okay, they are typically associated to oil and gas or plastics or pollution. Maybe detergents, not that sexy. Maybe plastics, textiles, okay, the textiles per se is not sexy, the brand itself is sexy. And unfortunately, what I have known is that chemical companies are not that into showing off or paying a lot of PR for being sexy or that the clients or users feel that belonging. You will never be like, oh, I love this type of polymers or oh, I love my Teflon. You will not likely feel that belonging into these type of companies. And that's why I think high school students are maybe hesitant or not looking forward to joining a chemical company and therefore not going for chemical engineering degree. This one idea is kind of similar to the previous one in the sense that chemical engineering has been getting hit a lot. Whenever we talk about climate change and global warming, we go to oil and gas or fuels or fossil fuels and so on. Whenever you talk about pollution in the seas, for instance, plastics, microplastics or so, chemical engineers are there to receive all the blame. So whenever someone states that our food is getting poisoned, it's because of certain chemical that has been spilled in X area. Or whenever we talk about pesticides, we are there to receive the blame for the agrochemicals. And of course, we need to be honest with ourselves. Chemical engineering has been, let's say, roaming for free for a lot of time. And the results have been seen notably. And let's be honest, a lot of chemical companies have not achieved this highest status of uh, environmental friendliness or going full green or alternative energies. We know that by definition, chemical engineering needs to manufacture a lot of products. And as long as they are allowed to produce under certain specifications or legal regulations, they will keep doing the same. This idea is definitely the top reason I think personally is why a lot of students are not going for chemical engineering. And I'm talking about the offer of other degrees. So for instance, back in the day, if you wanted to focus on environmental, you would go for chemical engineering, then maybe study a master degree on environmental engineering, and then you will end up as a environmental engineer. But now you have the degree itself as a bachelor. So you can go straight to environmental engineering and end up practicing environmental engineering right away, which is of course great. Another degree I think of is maybe pharmaceuticals. Back in the day, it was kind of hard to go directly to pharmaceuticals, or at least you will go for chemistry degree and then you will go for a master degree in pharmaceuticals or maybe you go to chemical engineering and then afterwards you prepare yourself with a master or a PhD on pharmaceuticals but right now you can go straight forward to pharmaceutical bachelor or something related towards pharmaceutical industry and of course we need to talk about the biotechnology or biotechnologist or the biotech engineer. Once again, back in the day, it was kind of hard to go directly for something related into biology, but at the same time into process engineering, but at the same time kind of like chemical engineering. But right now you have that specific offer. So if you were into maybe food industry, beverage industry, into beer manufacturing, maybe you are into pulp and paper manufacturing, you could go directly to biotech, get the latest technologies without going to the chemical engineering degree and then afterwards specializing on that. Okay guys, so I already talked about other offerings and those were related towards process or chemical engineering, but there's still one offering that's there hanging around, which is taking a lot of potential chemical engineer candidates. And I'm talking about computer science. So for this specific idea, I will be treating computer science and software engineers kind of similar. And I'm meaning all those persons that are dedicated towards coding or towards building software and so on. So needless to say, chemical engineers have this spark that love a lot of logic, a lot of mathematics, a lot of chemistry, physics. And to be honest, whenever I ask chemical engineers, what other bachelor would you go if you couldn't go or if you wouldn't study chemical engineer, they typically choose computer science or software engineer. It kind of makes a lot of sense to me because you are great at math, you're great at equations, you have a very great problem solving approach and you want to create something of your own. For instance, a software or a code or whatever related towards software. And this is something I've seen a lot in the subreddit of chemical engineering. You will see that a lot of people are wondering whether or not they should go for computer science or if they should change from 
chemical engineering to computer science and a lot of activity towards that topic. There's a lot of chemical engineers, students and professionals that want to explore this little area. Of course, there's a lot of solutions. Chemical engineers saying that chemical engineering was the best thing they could study because they could focus on the software part later. And of course, the other side, which state that chemical engineering is the worst degree. They should have gone directly to computer science. They will be happy in Silicon Valley. They will be earning a lot of money and not being unemployed searching for a chemical engineering job. So those were the ideas that I wanted to present you guys. Those are the reasons I think chemical engineering is getting less popular. And I'm pretty sure that this is good news for the market because the less students that are graduating, the less chemical engineers will be looking for a job. And the less chemical engineers looking for a job, there will be more job positions for us chemical engineers. But it's also kind of sad to know that a lot of chemical processes or a lot of chemical plants or companies will not have that chemical engineer to solve their problems. And I really don't want to make this video kind of negative. I want to shift the negativity towards positivity and I want to present you some real cool challenges just in case you are a young student or maybe you are thinking of shifting towards computer science or maybe going into another major. Here are some reasons that may be of interest to you. So quickly, climate change and global warming, whatever you want to name them, are serious problems that need to be addressed and need to be solved uh, rather quickly, right? This is by definition the top problem of humans. We need to solve this ASAP and chemical engineers are the ones that can do it quickly. Why? Because we're talking about chemicals, we're talking about fuel productions, we're talking about alternative sources of energy, we're talking about creating more chemicals with less pollution, more efficient. Another one that pops up to mind will be electrical vehicles. But not only the vehicles per se, which is of course something that already a chemical engineer could be working on, but I'm talking about the technologies that involve the battery. So there are many chemical reactions. If you have been studying the electrochemistry of your book, you know that there's a lot of ways to produce electricity from chemical reactions. So this is definitely one thing worth checking out. And if you're into Teslas, you love them, and you are studying chemical engineering, you can stick into that and go into future electrical vehicles. Study before, energy and fuels, definitely something worth checking out. Going for wind energy, solar energy, maybe going and checking out maritime energy, maybe geothermics. There are a lot of ways that we can produce energy. And we're looking for those engineers willing to explore those fields, making cheap technologies and solving our thirst for energy. Talking of COVID, of course, couldn't miss COVID. Pharmaceuticals are still things that we need to mass produce. And whenever we talk about mass production, we're talking about process engineering. And in this specific case, we'll be into pharma or biotech, but of course the chemical engineer could be helping there. Talking about hydrogen is something that's occurring right now. A lot of companies are going into hydrogen fuels. They want to get green hydrogens. They want to substitute their black for gray hydrogens. Of course, they want a lot of sources of hydrogen because hydrogen technologies are getting each time more relevant. So definitely worth checking out. And finally, let's get back to the 1900s, maybe into the harvest times. We're talking about solving the problem of agriculture. How can we produce chemicals that enrich the soils that make our crops grow faster, healthier, and cheaper. Either way, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed these ideas. Please let me know in the comments, especially what other ideas or comments do you have around this concept of chemical engineering getting each time less popular. Do you think is that true? Maybe is it regional? Maybe it's more like a generation thing? Uh, maybe in the future we will have more engineers, maybe less engineers. Let me know all about it. And for sure, I will be checking out the comments and let you know what are my thoughts as well. On my behalf, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video.